Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to discuss today. Storms, seen a boom, and I'll show you why you care about cosmological physics. We're getting started, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the northern coronal hole system taking over the Earth-facing half of the sun. Solar wind from the opening should impact Earth middle of the week, but meanwhile, we're still inside the elevated intensity of the last one. Three-day chart shows where we began and where we are now. Luckily, the elevated intensity was from nothing to minor, so geomagnetic conditions are quiet as well. We will be keeping an eye on the northern incoming limb as another active region prepares to crest into view there. Let's go to Sinabung, a sizable eruption of ash and smoke, and what's amazing to think about is that something about twice this big would be needed to really hit the stratosphere and about three times bigger for a major stratosphere conjection. If you'll recall, we forecast this event in this exact morning show based on the deep blood echo there four days ago. Folks, the twin systems heading for the Gulf Coast have already begun pounding the Caribbean. Cuba is taking it right now. The systems will both hit the U.S. coastline this week, with the first having dropped intensity overnight but is already starting to affect the land with its rain bands. Next one will impact Wednesday. Eyes open starting now. We also have a major storm set to hit the U.K., Ireland actually sees it first this evening, but few on these islands are going to be able to escape this one. We are also watching that slow-moving system in the West Pacific, still slated to rush up at Korea here Wednesday too. We are going to the news and starting with what hopefully marks the end of surprise quakes in California. We have been on the precipice of that since we identified the foreshock signature the day before the 2019 Ridgecrest 7-pointer. And now, they are showing that these patterns can be smoked out in numerous ways. Indeed, the foreshock patterns are more important for the U.S. West Coast than any of the atmospheric signal precursors. 10 points for that team. Up next, we're going out to TRAPPIST-1, the Jupiter-like system that contains a dwarf star and seven planets. A few of them are very Earth-like. They have suggested habitability potential on planets D, E, F, and G, but have recently backed off of D due to stellar flares and radiation. Meanwhile, they have confirmed the presence of tons of water on the others, and today they are further investigating the habitability potential based on that stellar radiation, and are concluding that even planet E may be too close. They do qualify that statement by suggesting that UV-resistant life could take it, and also things under the vast oceans on these worlds could take it too. And that, of course, brings up my number one complaint about TRAPPIST-1 habitability discourse. Why not planet H? It's covered in ice, but that's perfect shielding for its underground ocean. TRAPPIST-1H is my best bet for microbes cocooned in its icy shell. Quick look up next at star clusters embedded in a cosmic filament. They find the magnetic fields often running along these filaments and into the star-forming regions. This is a nice glimpse at how the particles and fields work together to make these stars, whereas in the much broader molecular clouds rather than filaments, they tend to form these filaments in the first place. This would be the latter stage of the system. Heading out to the meeting of hot and cold, what happens when a cold cloud meets hot nuclear wind in the astrophysical plasma environment? Most importantly, however, is the use of magnetic fields in their models, helping to account for what they couldn't account for before. Magnetic fields enhance vision once again. And in this same vein, those cold clouds seen blasting away from the galactic core we reported a few days ago amidst the hot wind continue delivering awesome science. They are now certain that these cold gas bits are not negligible in the star formation models. Galactic science changes again. But more importantly, they still don't know what that cold gas is doing there or where it came from. Folks, this is yet another point that can be resolved by a plasma focus in cosmological science, but the science is much more than that. It's more than the universal scale, cosmological physics and plasma structure, the history and future of the universe. But the science scaled down is why the planets affect the sun, both in terms of sunspot production and long cycle activity. This is how space weather is much more than an auroral stimulus with the magnetic interface, but how it can work the crust, help trigger massive earthquakes, and even give away their signals beforehand. This is how the sun controls the climate, sneaks in to work short-term weather, and this is how the solar effect on our bodies not only works, but how you can fight it with the placebo effect. Your thoughts overruling physics and chemistry in the system you control, making whatever you thought a reality. It's magic 
unless it's a plasma universe. This explains why people of this planet are losing the plot and themselves, as the electromagnetic environment of this planet and the entire solar system is shifting quickly. Folks, this isn't just nerd astronomy science. This is everything. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.